Good morning, Robert. Good morning. Good morning. Do you happen to know whether we can um, donate clothes to Guardian Angel or is it just coats? You can always donate clothes to Guardian Angel. They have a thrift shop there. And, where, uh, they, it, where would we put all the clothes? Because there's, it won't fit in the blue bin. Yeah, I would just, um, you have a key to the parish. Yeah. Shop, right? I would just set them in the foyer there with a little paper on it that says for Guardian Angel and add her, I will get them and take them up. Okay, very good, thanks. Clothes for Guardian Angel, they won't fit in the bin. Betsy's got a lot of clothes. What? Ed was asking what you're talking about. Oh. Happy birthday. Mom went through her closet and she has all these really good clothes and good shoes that, some that haven't even been worn. Who is this? A friend of mine. Friend of yours. Oh. So I have them all in my car and I was just wondering where to put them. Mm. You can bring them over here if you'd rather. Did you ask did you? Yeah. Um, it would just say moving things another time, you know. Oh, right. okay. Well. Then maybe I'll stop by after swimming because I have to go out and fold bulletins. Are you going to be home? I don't know. Like I'll, be doing, I'll be doing yoga, but Ed will be here. Okay. Ed, will you be here to get Betsy's, the clothes Betsy has? Yeah, he'll be here. Okay. So it'll probably be like around 1130, quarter to 12. Okay. Okay. Living Thank in you. the rain, I fully understand, but yoga in the rain, that, that seems... <laughs> Very iffy. No. Zoom yoga. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Yeah. So did Ed get my message about fabric yesterday that I have bolts of fabric? Did you get that message? Ed? No. What? No. I left it on his phone yesterday. He said he didn't get it. I didn't didn't get it. it. No. I have fabric it. for guardian, guardian angels. Do they want bolts of fabric? <clears throat> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I've never seen anything like that in the thrift shop. Okay. I'll ask. Hey, ask. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Happy birthday tomorrow, Betsy. I'm mailing your card today. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> Have you put a stamp on it? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I'm stopping by today. Oh. Oh, okay. I didn't put a stamp on it yet. No. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. You. <laughs> we'll get her on the post office. Okay. There you go. Knock three times. <laughs> Joe sent me. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll put a stamp inside and you can have the stamp. No, I got plenty of stamps. I don't need a stamp. <laughs> I buy my stamps at Costco, so. Well, I'm using the stamps for my dad's stamp collection. Oh, wow. We took, we took them in, we took them in when I was in New Mexico, in New Mexico with my brother, he has all of them to this stamp show. And they said, well, they're good for postage. <laughs> 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 A bunch of them, I'm having fun with them. So. Well, oh, that's good. You're not gonna get rich, huh? No. Free forever stamps. Yeah. yeah, but they're really pretty. <laughs> We're using Ed's computer so we can talk to you. <laughs> We're going to talk computer. today, huh? So you got your new computer, Susan? I got my new computer and I hate it. Oh, well. But. <laughs> Good ad. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get? So we sure not to get it. It's a Dell. From micro. Yeah, from the micro store or whatever. But the, the, the microphone's up by the camera. So you have to have your face right in it. Which, you know, you know, it's a laptop, so I guess, you know, that's what people do, but I am more comfortable sitting back with my head, so it just doesn't work for me very well. I have no idea where ours is. <laughs> and 
and I even bought another microphone to plug in and it just doesn't work. So we're using it. That's our solution. We have more than one computer around here, so. Well, I'm sorry you're not happy with it. Yeah. I'm happy with it in every other way, you know. Oh, okay, good. Gary, is that a new title you've bestowed upon yourself there? What, Ed? Yeah, they, call me, yeah, they call me Patriarch in the uh, troop. Uh, so. <laughs> I've been there so long in the Boy Scout troop. So they, they call me Patriarch. You all do know we're recording. <laughs> oh, we're not. Are we? Oh, we are. We are. All right. We are recording again. Can we see that? Yep. Yes. yes. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. <clears throat> Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord, our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Lord, have mercy. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. We have kind of a long Bible uh, reading today. Who would like to read the first paragraph? I will. Great. And maybe the second one? I will. Wonderful. I'll read the third one. Okay, that's the first one. Finally, brothers and sisters, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you learn from us how you ought to live and to please God, as in fact you are doing, you should do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication, each one of you know how to control your own body in holiness and honor, not with lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one wrong or exploit, that no one wrong or exploit a brother or sister in this manner matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, just as we have already told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God did not call us to impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever rejects this rejects not human authority, but God, who also gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now concerning love of the brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anyone write to you. For you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do love all the brothers and sisters throughout Macedonia, but we urge you, beloved, to do so more and more, to inspire, to live quietly, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your hands as we directed you, so that you may have, so that you may behave properly toward outsiders and be dependent on no one. We do not want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters about those who have died so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who have died. 
for the Lord himself with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. What pops out to you in this passage? How can Paul be so sure of what happens in the end at the end? Bob, would you scroll up to the second paragraph? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm troubled by the fact that uh, behave properly toward outsiders and be dependent upon no one. That's a little tough for me. I look to others for resources in many ways and faith in such as well. And certainly, we all look to each other for love in various ways. I, I agree. I love that admonition to live quietly. That, that really speaks to me in this time when no one is quiet, lives quietly. <laughs> the possible exception of folks on this call. Don't count me. I was going to say. Don't count me. <laughs> me either. I, I love um, verse, or is it verse 13 there? Um, and the implication that we, we do have hope. Any thoughts on how this impacts your life today? Well, it does renew my, my dedication to uh, avoid fornication. mess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the part about controlling your body. We've been doing Tai Chi and I've become so much more aware of my body and how I hold my body and just living through my body. Yeah, I've become painfully aware of how many different ways I can hurt my body by doing almost nothing unusual. <laughs> right. I like the idea that Paul has, has found this community to be full of love for each other and of love for other uh, brothers and sisters throughout their region. And that uh, uh, he sees that, uh, you know, he says that we don't even need to, to write to you, but we will anyway. That I, I just think that's um, such a powerful testament to the nature of the community. I was a little surprised that Paul took such a swipe at the Gentiles in that little statement about passion, oh, wow. lustful passion. Mm. I thought he was preaching to the Gentiles. <laughs> uh -huh. Like the Gentiles. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of ironic that, you know, the, the message is love brothers and sisters, love everyone, and then he calls out the Gentiles.
Kind of a dark mm -hmm. reference to the Lord as an avenger and all these things. Yeah, I like I like that though yeah. that we that Paul calls out that we um, can take advantage of other people with our own bodies and warns them against it. This is one of those sections where it's very clear Paul is writing from a perspective where he thinks the return of the Lord in the end time is imminent. Uh, he says, then we who are left al are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Um, so Paul is ever in the expectation that the end time was coming very, very soon and that he was probably going to be alive when it happened. I know they were concerned about people who had died before. Mm -hmm. There's a sense in which this describes what some people experience in near death experiences. Um, um, I was thinking the same thing. I've read a number of accounts of people who have had life after death experiences. Yeah. And they are they very much are there and in, engaged. Right. With those on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, he had this vision on the road to Emmaus and uh yeah. I kind of wonder whether he had another vision for the end times to know this or to talk about it this way. I mean, he never said he had another vision. But. Strikes me it's it's quite clear that Paul was uh, very unusual in having had such a traumatic experience that you just mentioned. Um, and in, in a sense, made such an enormous contribution only knowing Jesus through experience like that. So I'm really struck by, um, by Harrison's comment about being dependent on no one. And it's been in my brain since we started and I'm wondering with the directives that he's giving these people about fornication first, and then that they should live quietly, mind their own affairs and work with their hands so that they can behave properly towards outsiders and be dependent on no one. If, if those are the issues that he sees in this people that they maybe are living uh, dependently on outsiders um, and not doing their own work or living by gossip. I don't know. I, I can't remember if it's in the fifth chapter of this letter or if it's in the second letter to the Thessalonians, but he's very explicit that there were people who were not working, who were uh, being dependent upon uh, the livelihoods of others because they said it doesn't matter. It's the end times. Jesus is coming back next week, so um, I, I don't have to do any of those other things. Uh, so I, I'm, I know that he did write about that to the community in Thessalonica. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, that so many times Paul writes about taking care of each other and carrying each other's burdens, so that dependent on no one has to have a specific meaning there. I think in practical terms, um, 
to Harrison's point, we all rely upon our faith, our family, and our friends. Faith, family, and friends. Um, and you can pick your order of priority. <laughs> um, and that may change uh, day to day or season to season. But um, in those, in those uh, faith, family, and friend resources is tremendous love at the end of the day and support and guidance. I wonder if um, the end times for us is not the end times, but something dramatic that changes our world, like what we're living with now, the dramatic change to our world. And how does this speak to us? Any last comments? I am very encouraged that we will be with the Lord forever. Let us pray for those whom we love. In a moment of silence, we simply name before God those he puts on our hearts. <clears throat> Any shared requests? For all the poll workers and those voting, in person. For all the students in Carroll County who are taking the PSATs today. Wow. Let us pray for those whom we do not love. Again, in the silence of our own hearts, we name before God those who have hurt us and who we need to forgive. We name before God those whom we have hurt and ask God's forgiveness. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me, Christ on my left and my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me on my left and my right. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.